Let me ask you a question we asked Gary Gensler, which is, you are a cop on the beat, right? Yep. He's a cop on the beat. This happened on the beat. Yeah. It's hard to say, look, I know what's on my beat, but, I, you know, my hands are tied, so I can't do anything about it. Do you think that there's a responsibility for regulators to somehow, e even if they don't have all the tools, to raise their hand and say, there's a bigger problem here? So I feel like I did that. I, I, I have jurisdiction over derivatives markets. I don't have jurisdiction over cash markets. It's the idea in a traditional commodity of me being able to go into a cash wheat sale between a buyer. I can't regulate that. So I literally had to focus on the derivatives markets. And the CFTC has been pretty closely tied to the crypto space because it emerged, it emerged in our markets going back to 2014. And we've brought a lot of enforcement cases. We've been very... Um, observant of what's going on, and that's why I was very strongly advocating and continue to for more authority. But there's literally no right. legal authority this for me. This battle, to go though, space. between the SEC and the CFTC, and it feels like there is a battle. Do you think that has? I mean, is no, it fair to say that no. has slowed whatever was supposed to happen happen and from a regulatory perspective? Yeah. So G Gary and I have shared interests. We care about transparency. We care about customer protections, and we understand the unregulated crypto space presents risks to customers and market stability. No doubt. The issue that really resonated, and we spoke about this the last time I was on the show, was about security versus commodity. I think what's going on in the past week should dismiss that as a, um, an issue that's going to create inertia to get something you, done. You, we can figure that is out. Is there going to be an extradition? Do you, do you think that this could be an innocent, uh, just bad judgment? Or is there, do you, in your view, do you think that there's uh, some, some criminal... Joe, I don't want to, you know... Uh, I don't want to assume it, what... How about just as you, Rostam, not as uh, the CFTC guy? I, you know, <laughs> a lot of what's been reported right now suggests that there's going to be more than just some market manipulation if, and, maybe, and violations. Maybe we have an extradition with, with yeah. uh, Mahomes. But I, I don't want to... Let me ask you just yeah. about all of these crypto coins. I'm not talking Bitcoin, even Ethereum. What about all of these made-up coins, like FTT, yeah. like Serum, where it looks like... They made up this coin, they made their own marks on it, they gave other people money to then turn around and buy those stupid coins mm. so that they could mark them up on their books and the buyers of those coins. Yeah. Uh, it, uh, like serious companies that, that are out here who now have a, a situation with all this, what do you do with these made up dumb coins? And so I think regu marks? regulation, and, and, and Gary and I agree on this, I think a vast majority of these coins are securities. The FTT token seems to have the characteristics of a security because there's an incentive structure where you get paid out. Garbage. Well, it's not about who gets what. It's about creating a transparent regulatory framework so that there's disclosures and there's information to investors so that, you know, right. we know how so to allocate What do you do the about the marking system? Because I think one of the other great lessons of this whole experience is what are these balance, what are the balance sheets of these exchanges really yeah. look like? Yeah. And to the degree that they're either made up tokens or, or tokens that have such a tiny float or just have a, such a tiny yeah. float or arguably are being inflated uh, almost artificially through these sort of uh, various networks of people Here, who are trying to do this. Million dollars, you give it back. What, what, do you, right. what do you do about that? And, and, and who regulates that piece of it? I think that's all tied into a larger regulatory structure where you have disclosures, you have audited financials, you have information about the financial asset, which then creates a mar a, the ability for the market to price the asset. Right well, when now, you look at FTX, so and look, opaque. they ostensibly had, I mean, like they, they, they had an accounting firm. I, I don't know if it's, it's, it's the accounting firm you want them to have, but the question is, who, who is supposed to do that? Who's supposed to sign off on it? And are there, are there rules and regulations that we could have in the U.S. that would protect against an exchange that's operating abroad? I mean, that's the other piece yeah. of this. As long as this is a global business and we have these tokens operating in other places, no matter what, to some degree, it's going to rebound yeah, and redound to us. I mean, this is a, it, it's a huge issue. Gary and I participate in a lot of multilateral organizations with other jurisdictions, and crypto and crypto regulation has been a high priority for several years right now. You're right, the sort of um, borderless nature of the technology makes it even harder than traditional financial markets, whether it's on the security side or the derivative side. Certainly, swaps markets are very international in nature, but there has to be coordination among the international regulators. Ultimately, though, having a regulatory structure within the U.S., which I think has to be the priority, would then prevent, by law, both on the civil side and the criminal side, of having these you know, issuers, these exchanges, offering services to U.S. Right. customers.